Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, we will start with a new module today on crystallographic texture. Okay. So, the idea here is to make you understand the crystallographic texture and suppose if you see it anywhere, uh, you should not be uh, leaving it that uh, maybe you are not able to understand uh, it completely. Okay. So, it will not be a very exhaustive course on uh, how, how to do the texture analysis. Okay. Uh, the idea here is just to ma make you acquaint with the crystallographic texture, so that if you see a, a particular representation of texture, you should be able to understand and you should be able to uh, correlate with the mechanical properties, if uh, there are any mechanical properties or any other properties are related with the texture. So, you should be able to understand that what, uh, what the, uh, the author is trying to, uh, to convey. Okay. So, in that actually the first uh, basic of the, the, the understanding starts from the stereographic projection. So, that is what I am taking today as the first lecture in this particular module. So, basically texture just a, a quick uh, way, way to show, show you that what do we mean by texture is basically if you see a individual grain in a polycrystalline material. Okay. So, what is the identity of the grain is that how uh, the unit cell is oriented in in the uh, in the grain okay for example in one grain the unit cell is like this okay in another uh, grain the unit cell may be like this in another grain the unit cell may be like this okay so if suppose all the grains are random all these unit cells in individual grain are randomly oriented then we would call it as a weak texture or random texture okay there is no particular uh, way the the unit cells are arranged in uh, in individual grain okay but if you find that some of the grain or a good number of grains okay have a particular uh, orientation of unit cell okay and th these th th these are not required to be together okay these grains can especially can be anywhere in throughout the material but if you find that let us say out of 100 grains, suppose 30 grains have a particular orientation for example, like this, okay. then I would call that the material has a certain texture, okay, crystallographic texture that there is a preference for a certain type of arrangement. Okay. So, that is what is shown here uh, in, the, in, the, in the schematic here, okay. as you can see in this first instance here, all the unit cells are arranged in a particular fashion. Okay. So, I would call because in this case all the unit cells are arranged in particular fashion, I would call that it is highly textured. Okay. Whereas, in this case the second case here you can see that all the unit cells are randomly oriented, all have different orientation. So, I would be calling maybe it has a random texture, okay. there is no particular preference. Okay. And, uh, Usually, when we have to define a unit cell that is in three dimension, okay, if I want to define that what is the uh, uh, orientation of this unit cell, okay, I have to have some reference from which I can take or I can tell you that what is the orientation of this. Okay. If there is no reference in the space, I cannot define that what is the orientation of this unit cell. Okay. So, to define a reference frame, uh, which I can use to define the orientation of this unit cell. Okay. Usually, the most popular uh, one because rolling is one of the most popular processing technique, okay. the, the symmetry is taken from there okay. and it has a orthogonal symmetry as you can see, you have rolling direction. Okay. So, you, you, this is your rolling direction for example, this is your transverse direction, so TD okay, and this is your normal direction ND. Okay, all perpendicular to each other. 
okay so this this is a reference frame which i can use to define the orientation of the unit cell how we are going to do that we will see okay so if in terms of texture representation we will come back to this again okay basically you have three methods uh, either you can uh, show it in terms of pole figure okay or you can tell it terms of hkl uvw okay or you can term uh, tell it in terms of what we call as orientation distribution function method okay for example this hkl value the example is shown here okay as we have already seen that my rolling direction transverse and nd are the reference frame okay so basically we are trying to say that which hkl plane of the grain is parallel to the suppose this is my rolled sheet okay this is my rolling plane okay so which plane of this unit cell is parallel to the rolling plane so suppose if i keep the unit cell like this i can say my 001 plane is parallel to the rolling plane and then i can say that which direction is parallel to the rolling direction okay so if you see my direction is either 100 or 010 is parallel to the rolling direction if i put unit cell like this then 110 direction will be parallel to rolling direction so i can use this hkl uvw uh, method also to express that what will be the uh, the orientation of the unit cell okay but before uh, going further uh, because pole figure is one of the most uh, uh, used and important way of representing texture okay so before coming to pole figure i will first introduce you to the stereographic projection because using stereographic projection only we can uh, go to the pole figure uh, how to create pole figure for a particular uh, orientation okay so what is the stereographic projection so it is a very convenient way to depict any three dimensional information okay so as you can see that when i am talking about a unit cell okay i am talking about a three dimensional uh, information okay you have different planes in three dimension okay you have different directions okay some plane can be at angle like that but i cannot do any analysis in three dimension like that so i have to depict all this information on two dimensions okay and uh, when we are discussing about crystallography okay our main purpose is uh, about what are the angles between the different planes okay i am not concerned with the dimension of the plane because it can be of infinite size still uh, it has it has no uh, particular meaning for for us okay but what are the angles between different planes and direction that is of importance to us so we when we are doing this projection we want to preserve the angular uh, information so angular information should not be distorted okay so when we are doing this projection we are uh, preserving the angular relationship now uh, uh, continuing with stereographic projection basically every plane is defined by its normal okay and uh, these normals of different planes okay are starting from uh, one we call as sphere i will tell you that what do we mean by this reference is fair okay uh, actually we are saying that all the normals to the planes uh, are starting from the center of a reference is fair okay and uh, what these normals are doing they are intersecting the surface of reference is fair in a set of points which are called poles okay just uh, bear, bear with me i will explain all these things uh, to you in, a, in in an animation right now okay so basically if i take a, a a unit cell like this so you have a plane okay there is a normal okay so this normal will go and cut a sphere okay we will i'll discuss what this sphere means and then we project this poles on a projection plane in such a way that we preserve the angles okay and the poles represent orientation of the planes orientation of crystal by their position on the reference sphere and plane may also be represented by its trace on reference sphere making a great circle on the reference sphere okay so just uh, quickly i will show you what do we mean by this 
okay so basically this is the idea of stereographic projection you can take a, a unit cell like this okay take a very tiny unit cell okay very, very tiny so that the idea is that all the normals uh, from the plane okay should be seen as they are coming out from the center of the sphere okay on what what is the sphere a sphere is an imaginary sphere around this particular unit cell this unit cell is at the center of the sphere and in imaginary sphere you can take a sphere as big as you want maybe equal to the size of the universe if you like okay it doesn't matter okay and then we are looking at the normals which are coming out of these planes okay and where they are cutting this sphere okay so wherever they are cutting the sphere okay that will be called as pole okay and if i extend this particular plane okay instead of taking normal if i just extend this plane this plane will also go and cut the sphere at some place okay so that will be called as the trace of the plane so you have, for every plane in the stereographic projection you have a trace okay and you have a pole okay but still it is it, it is still in three dimension till now okay we have to bring it to two dimension that is where the projection will come okay so i'll explain that with a, with a animation here so basically you have a, a, a unit cell like this then i am taking it a very tiny unit cell okay and there is a, a sphere around the unit cell and i am taking a a plane which is cutting the center of the sphere okay which is passing through the center of the sphere okay and this plane i am calling it, it as a equatorial plane for for uh, just for uh, which is dividing this sphere into two equal parts two hemispheres basically and let's call one as top hemisphere another as bottom hemisphere okay basically two poles okay and then i am taking the normals okay so in this case i am interested in uh, 100 planes okay so i am taking the normals of 100 okay so one normal as you can see is coming out from this particular plane here okay and hitting uh, cutting the sphere at some point so this is the pole of this particular plane so if i call this plane as p1 so this is the pole of p1 okay let's call it as p1 pp1 then there is another normal going from another plane okay uh, another 100 type of plane okay then there is a third normal which is also uh, coming out of another 100 type of plane okay so let's call this as p2 and this as pp2 and this as p3 and pp3 okay this particular plane is p3 so you can see that i have taken three normals here from three different plane i can take from other planes also just for simplicity i am taking it from three 100 type of planes okay there will be also normals to 100 plane which will go in the southern hemisphere like this okay but i am not interested in in the normal which are going in the southern hemisphere okay or or the bottom hemisphere i am only interested in the uh, normal which are going in the Uh, top hemisphere okay and uh, i am also kind of uh, creating a reference frame on this plane equatorial plane okay and that i am calling as north south and east west okay so right now it is in three dimension when we will see from the top okay then the the north all these four will be projected on the screen so now still it is in three dimension all the information so now i am taking a connecting this pole with the pole of the bottom hemisphere okay uh, all the and the, when it, when i am doing this projection this particular projection is uh, this particular pro, pole is projected on the equatorial plane like this similarly i will join this pole with with the bottom hemisphere pole okay it is also cutting the equatorial plane at this point okay so there are two already then the third one projection 
this will also cut the equatorial plane in the at one point. So, basically now three dimensional information we have reduced into two dimension okay, by these poles, a projection of poles. Okay. So, now I am just changing the view here. Okay. Now, I will start seeing from the top. Okay. So, from here I will see that what is the condition of different projections. Okay. So, when I am doing that I am changing the view here. Okay. Now, I am looking from the top. So, T should come somewhere here at the center okay. and as I told you north south uh, I have plotted there. So, north will come here, south will come here, east will come here and west will come here. Okay. So, I have removed the other uh, part of the equatorial plane. I am only taking the trace of the uh, equatorial plane which is which, which was cutting the sphere. Okay, so, this is my trace okay, of the equatorial plane. Okay, so, this is my north, south, east, west. Okay, so, these three points so the normals which we projected will look something like this. Okay, so, only 100 poles we were taking. Okay, those, those three poles are projected here. The other three poles will be in the bottom hemisphere that we are not projecting here. Okay because then it will be more confusing to do analysis and because of symmetry it does not make any difference. So, only we, we are projecting the top part of the hemisphere okay. and these three are the projected poles on the equatorial plane. Okay. Now, just to give you a more understanding of this, okay. so as I told you that we started with the unit cell okay, and Suppose this unit cell is at the center of this particular uh, sphere. Okay, so suppose uh, the, it is oriented something like this. Okay, so this one pole will go maybe hit somewhere here. Okay, this one will go and hit somewhere here. Okay, and let's say take slightly here. So the third one may be hit somewhere here. Okay. And then we are to taking projection on the this particular plane here which is going through this and that is projected. Okay. If I want to find the trace of this planes, suppose this particular plane for which this is the pole. Okay. So, this plane is will be extended like this. Okay. So, if I want to take the projection of this plane, okay, it will be the plane on the reference sphere will be something like this. Okay. And these trace will also be projected on the equatorial plane. Okay. So, on the equatorial plane, okay, how it will look like I am just showing in you in this particular slide here. Okay. So, this is a plane okay, for which this is my pole P1 okay. and this is the plane which is extended and when it is cutting the sphere, it will form a projection like this. Okay. This is another plane for which this is the pole P2 and this is the another trace for that okay, pole and then the, this is the angle between the two P1 and P2. I will show you how to find this angle between two, two planes. Okay. So, right now it is a, an angle on another circle okay, where we are finding the angle between these two pole. Okay. So, this is how you can find pole and trace of the plane. Okay, so, when, when, we, when you have this kind of stereographic projection, okay, we, we define two types of circle okay, and this is very close to what you see on the, on the atlas okay, that you have some what we call as great circles and these circles are the one which for which the center coincide with the center of the reference sphere and some are a small circle for which the center does not coincide with the center of the reference sphere. Okay. And as you can see all these are actually great circle, okay. this one, this one because their center and the center of the sphere are same. Okay. So, all the angular measurements actually we do on the great circle, okay. we will I will show you that how we can do that. Uh, in the uh, in the next lecture okay 
first uh, let us see that how this particular uh, uh, the, the circular uh, projection is can be divided into uh, multiple circles. For example, this is a right now a three dimensional uh, globe kind of uh, uh, sphere okay. and you can see that it is divided into different uh, by different longitudes and latitudes. Okay. So, all the longitudes are the great circles. Okay. So, all these longitudes are great circle because their center and the center of the sphere are same. Whereas, uh, all these latitudes are small circles, their center will be somewhere here which is not going to match with the center of the sphere. Only one latitude is such that, that its center matches with the center of the sphere and that is what we call as equator. Okay. So, very similar to what you see in the uh, in the atlas. Okay. So, this is a typical, uh, so all this uh, basically traces also uh, which, which we have plotted that can also be projected on the equatorial plane. Okay. So, if you do that they will form this kind of uh, great circles. Okay. So, that you can do a graduation here, okay. you can do a marking and that is how you can get a, a uh, construction which we call as wolf net. Okay. So, this wolf net we, we are going to use for uh, doing all our calculation for the stereographic projection. Okay. So, it is uh, it has north, south, east, west and so on and uh, this particular one is graduated with 10 degree interval. Okay. So, every uh, two graduations have a distance of 10 degree okay. and uh, when you completely do this projections. Okay. Basically, what you can get at the end of it is a, st a standard stereographic projection. Okay. So, what does it mean? For example, in this parti particular case, we are saying that it is a standard 001 stereographic projection of cubic crystal. Okay. So, when I am saying standard 001 uh, stereographic projection, I am putting the keeping the unit cell like this. Okay at the center of the sphere. So, what will happen? The 0, 0, 001 will go and hit directly the top pole okay, and it will be projected exactly at the center because whatever is hitting right there and when I am connecting it to the bottom uh, pole okay, that will go through the center of the sphere itself. Okay. So, that will be obviously coming at the center okay, and that will be 0, 0, 001. Now, you can see that other normals, suppose this is your 100 plane and this is your 010 plane, the green is 100 plane. So, 100 will go and it is going through the equator in the equator itself okay, and hitting the sphere at the end. Okay. And when I take the projection from there, the projection will be exactly at the equatorial plane itself. Similarly, 0, 010 0 will go like this and hit the sphere and if I take the projection of that, it will be directly at the at that particular location itself. Okay. So, you can see these two conditions here very nicely. So, you have 100 0, 0 at the one end and you have 0, 010 0 at the another end and the, there is a 90 degree relationship between the two. Okay. The other poles I am not showing right now because in the next lecture we will see that how I can use this stereographic projection okay, to plot a standard stereographic projection like what you are seeing here. Okay. So, basically what you are seeing here is that all the poles are or all the planes are plotted on a two dimension and their angular relationship is preserved okay. and you can easily see that what will be the uh, using wolf net what will be the angle between different planes. Okay. So, all the poles like 0, 1, 1 type okay, will be plotted here. Okay. You can see all these poles of 1, 0, 0 type, 1, 1, 0 type. Then you have all the poles of 1, 1 type. These are the important planes for us. Okay. So, all these are plotted on a stereographic projection. Okay. So, in the next lecture, I will show you that how I can use the wolf net uh, to uh, or how I can use this uh, stereographic projection to draw a, a standard stereographic projection of a particular or orientation of the unit cell. Okay. And that once we understand that, 
that will help us in creating a pole figure for a particular uh, particular orientation of the unit cell okay so i hope we, this is a, actually a, some some kind of imagination is required in three dimension okay so i hope you might have able to understand that how i can you plot a standard uh, stereographic projection or how i can do a stereographic projection plotting okay and now i will tell you how you can use this to create the standard stereographic projections okay thank you Thank you.